I don't understand how people don't follow human attention. Human attention is the asset. People ask me all the time, what if something gets banned? What if something changes? I'm always like, then the attention's gonna go somewhere. I'll run print ads if the whole world's reading magazines. Over the next five years, you'll have people that move faster on using AI for content creation and they'll get a land grab. But somewhere in the next decade or two, it'll be no different than using a search engine. So there'll be a window right now where there'll be leaders with, who will create and they'll create more content, more specific. The AI will do a better job than even people that have spent 20 years trying to be good at it. And that's fine and that will be normalized. The problem is, or the opportunity is, what will be the next step? More importantly, the critical thinking of the input becomes a really interesting game. You know, it's really funny for me to watch all these schools and universities ban all these products. They'd rather have kids memorize information that's a commodity than start teaching people critical thinking of inputting into the AI products, which is actually the punchline. I was like, wait a minute, this is what I've been waiting for my whole life. I've never been good at the commodity. I can't put seven sentences together that are proper grammar, but I can come up with the ideas that actually matter. And so I'm actually very excited. I've heard a lot of people talk about this is bad for the creative industry. I'm like, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to the creative industry. It's just gonna be the greatest thing that happens to the creative people. The commodity of creativity, executing it, that's gonna be commoditized. But that's what's always happened. That's what the tractor did to farming. Innovation's always gonna do this. So I think the interesting thing is twofold. One, this is about to expose the most creative critical thinkers and I think she and he is gonna have a very good you know, decade two, three, four, and two, it's still gonna come down to the idea. You know, you're still gonna have to input, like, write me a sentence in the voice of Porky Pig that talks about, like, you're still gonna have to come up with that. I think that ideas and creativity have always mattered. I think the process of getting to ideas, both in Madison Avenue and advertising and in the creative field, has actually become clunky, inefficient, and rewards a lot of people that don't bring any value to it. I think AI is going to have a very big impact on separating the people that have great ideas versus the ones that don't, and I think it's gonna be interesting to watch. I don't understand how people don't follow human attention. Human attention is the asset. People ask me all the time, what if something gets banned? What if something changes? Vine used to be big, then it got bought. I'm always like, then the attention's gonna go somewhere. If all of social media, disappears off the face of the earth tomorrow. That's an opportunity for me because eight billion people are still gonna put their attention somewhere, whether that's connected TV, whether that's AV, AR, VR, like it's, the attention's gonna go. I'll run print ads if the whole world's reading magazines. So I think this emotion, the emotion of holding up a distribution platform is a humongous vulnerability. I'm just prepared on an everyday basis to wake up and adjust to where humans have given their attention. I also think it's a good idea to bring value to people. You know, I think what's really evolved in the death of television ads is that not only have we, over the last two decades, moved our attention to other places with the growth and expansion of the internet, but the value proposition of a commercial on television is zero. If the ads happen to be decent, somewhat interesting, somewhat intriguing, it could still be a much more viable medium than it is today. It's why the Super Bowl in America continues to work. But, you know, they're just not. And by the way, most TikToks are not valuable either. It's just there's so many of them on a daily basis that even if 1% is good, that's a lot of good. Whereas television commercials are low, there's not so many of them and none of them are good. I would argue a lot of the ads are not good, but it's a cultural phenomenon to tune in. This morning I'm reading the team talking globally on WhatsApp, and they're like, the Oscars were up 18% in viewership, and my contribution was, but nobody watched the ads. The Oscars might be up 18% because we're getting out of, into a post-COVID world, and I also think there's a huge opportunity for someone to innovate. The world is so fragmented now. Think about how your product works. Your product is based on the interest graph, not the social graph. 
But what happens when you build on the interest graph is we get into a fragmented world. So I actually think the Oscars were up 18% in America because humans are subconsciously yearning for joint experience. The World Cup is fun because we're all watching the same thing. We're getting pushed, not just by your platform, the world is going in one direction. We will be fragmented, which means there's an opportunity for 10 or 20 things to bring us all together. There's incredible opportunity for that. But I think it's not that there's good ads. Really, I think more than half of them are a complete waste of $20 million. I think it's just a cultural phenomenon for us to all be joined in. And so I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the evolution of us finding new things for all of us to watch together, maybe even globally, now that we're all connected.